Hi everyone, I'm Noemi El Maui, the Head of Operations at Viaduct Generation. We're an SEO agency that are mission-led. Um, and today we're joined by Fabio Mbalo, who is our CEO and co-founder of VG. And today we're going to be talking you through the importance of measuring data and what happens when there is a lack of data. Um, all of this kind of comes back actually to the reason why VG was launched in the first place. So let's let's get cracking. Um, so Fabio, why don't you kind of let people know in the first place kind of who you are and introduce the idea of Viaduct Generation? Yeah. Um, so yes, I'm, I'm Fabio. Um, we initially started Viaduct in, in 2020. The whole idea came in 2020 when unfortunately and tragically George, George Floyd was, was murdered at the hands of, of the police. So I think in the in, in times with such emotions running, like with emotions running so high, we, we decided to look for something that could really help the, the community. And at the time, I, um, I had been working digital for a long time, starting my career in Google, and I decided to make a study to, to analyze how many uh, black-owned businesses were sort of ranking in the SERPs, because especially given that the fact that it was COVID at the time and everyone was doing a lot of online shopping, it was very clear to me that the perhaps the businesses that were... Uh, being the most affected by it were businesses that haven't invested in SEO previously, which then made me think about the fact that although I had been in the industry for about seven years at the time, I had never really come across a black owned business. So that really like that sort of hope thought process made me want to do the study to, to analyze and see how many black owned businesses we had ranking in, in different UK industries. Great. And I guess as you kind of started doing that research is when you first noticed essentially the lack of data in that area. Did it exist at all before? Like how did you even go about understanding that there was no data? Yeah, so that so so that is it, right? Like um it's unfortunately the majority of studies when it comes to business related things they don't really take into account the black community. Uh, and when they do take into account the black community it's just to talk about the, the lack of funding in most cases, um, and there's so much more that our businesses lack, right? Um, and I mean, the only thing I'm sort of a professional in uh, as of now or at the time, um, it was digital world, specifically SEO, right? So it didn't really matter how many searches and how much I, I decided to change the questions I was asking the search engines, that there was no information out there about, um, yeah, black-owned businesses in in ranking in the SERPs, right, or in the search results pages. So, so yeah, that's what sort of prompted me to be the one to do it instead. Yeah, and what do you think are, like, the consequences of this lack of data? I mean, when when you start shining a light, a light on things, um, it, I think it, it goes down in two different avenues, right? Like, it goes down, like people that are part of that study, so the community that is a part of that study then starts thinking about it and starts thinking about the impact of um, not ranking highly in the SERPs, for example, in the, giving this example, right? But then he also shines a light on, um, in this particular case, um, those that provide funds to business owners, right? I mean, when, when I did the study... Uh, what is it, perhaps last year or the year before, uh, right before my talk at Brighton SEO, where I was talking about the lack of uh, representation of black-owned businesses, I also then found out um, that only 43% of black-owned businesses in the UK get approved for a business loan, right? Um, and then you compare that to the 73% of white-owned businesses that get approved for a business loan, you know, like you start really realizing the, the sort of difficulties that... Um, uh, black business owners have when it comes to funding, right? So I think shining a light into the, the overall problem allows for sort of other conversations to then spark, right? Because then if black-owned businesses get approved for more loans, they then have more of, um, more of a chance to invest in different different marketing channels, right? I mean, ranking highly on, on Google is, is, is quite a long process. It, it, it takes a lot of hard work and, and investment, 
to be completely honest. So it's it's understandable that a community that where the majority of of, of entrepreneurs don't get given funding. Of course, they then lack presence in the SERPs, you know, even if yeah. there's a lack of education in the topic, but there's a lack of education in the topic of SEO um, everywhere. Like it transcends race in, in that case, right? However, it's a lot easier for our white counterparts to be investing in something like SEO because someone comes in and tells them to invest in something like that mm. and they then have the funds immediately available to be doing it, right? I've, however, like on businesses, for us, it's like the, whatever funds we have available within our businesses, in in most cases, as the, the data shows, is so limited that we decide to reinvest it through um, uh, restocking or paying our own employees, or even trying to pay ourselves. It's like, it's too much of a privilege to invest in a, in a channel that um, would take months for you to see ROI in, you know? For sure, yeah. And I guess also, the I think the danger of when data doesn't exist before is that we can't then measure the progress or really understand the priorities exactly. um, in that area as well. Yeah, that's that's exactly it, right? Like it's um, yeah. How how can you progress without <laughs> having, without having you know like a, a starting point or something to measure yourself against? You know, it's 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 impossible. It's so hard to yeah to to really quantify the movements whether we're going forward or we're going backwards. It's impossible because there's nothing there to sort to sort of measure it against, right? So so yes, for sure, you're right. A hundred percent. So what what kind of spurred you on and motivated you to to bring out that that first version of the report i think i think at the time it was just just like everyone else that's that is part of the community we were all pretty fed up with the whole situation right like i think at the time there was there was this whole thing about um the covid vaccination as well and like everyone sort of pointing fingers, at least in the UK, pointing fingers at the black community because a lot of us were quite sceptical about it. Then there was a whole thing about uh, Bill Gates and stuff trying to test the vaccine on on different on the African population in, in the continent. Then the whole thing with George Floyd happened. So there was, I think at the time, there was just so much, <laughs> we were all a little bit angry because we were locked up as well. And we, like, emotions were running so high because, again, like, racism felt like it was at its highest point with Donald Trump as well in America and everything that was happening at the time over there. Um, so I just, yeah, I just think at the time looking upwards and just seeing and just, and having um, a boss perhaps, or, you know, like a, an organization that perhaps you don't quite understand the people that look like me. I even worked for an American company at the time. So I think I was just so fed up with everything that just, I really just wanted to try and find a way to help us all, you know, because you you could see it, right? Like with all the protests around the world, you could see the amount of people that were fed up with it. And I, I also have a little boy, a little black boy that I look at him and you see the, the sort of um, naivety to the world, you know, and like the cuteness in, in his eyes. And you're like, I'd never really want that to disappear just because of the color of your skin, you know? So, I think I think I, I really just wanted to try try and do something that could could help us, could help the future generations, or at least you know put a little a little rock in this huge foundation that we have to build. You know, a hundred percent. And so once you did, you had compiled that report and you had the data. How yeah. did people react to it? I mean, obviously this led to the founding of Viaduct Generation in the yeah. first place. But how did people kind of, I guess, outside of that circle, whether that be your former boss, even the industry itself, how did they react to it? So look, I was quite lucky, right? I worked at, oh, I actually worked for a German company um, before the American company that I worked at, uh, before I started VEG. And I worked for a German company called Search Metrics, um, amazing company at the time. They were huge in the SEO industry, um, a platform used by literally most big brands in the world, we're talking about your British Airways of the world, your HSBCs, your Barclays, your Disney's, Nike's. They had so many elite clients that, you know, like the, the, the power was huge. They only worked with enterprise companies at the time. Um, 
I worked there for, for about two years, two and a half years. I managed 86 accounts. So I had a very good relationship with everyone there, right? Like I had pretty much the UK office on my shoulders when it came to to handling clients. We're talking about over over four, four or five million a year that was being managed by, by myself. So the, like, you know, I had a very good relationship from with everyone, from the CEO to all the directors. Um, so when, when I did this study, I mean, the one thing about, some Germans, or at least those that I've met, is that when it comes to um, racial, racially related topics, they it, they are quite open minded. You know, I feel like I, I've lived in Portugal. I've lived. I was born and raised in Spain. I've lived now in the UK. I've spent a lot of time in Germany. Um, I do have a lot of French friends and acquaintances, family that lives in France as well. And I feel like you know, like it's it's quite easy to get to get an understanding of how most European countries sort of work when it comes to topics like this. And I, I could easily say that Germany is, is, is quite an open-minded one when, when, when you present certain, certain topics to the table, right? So search metrics were, were incredibly helpful. You know, at the time, I yes, I, I, I did the study and then all of a sudden I'm like, okay, what am I doing with this now? It's not like I, I had thousands of pounds saved up to, to be able to launch the business straight away. I didn't have the credibility behind my name. I was 25 years old at the time. Um, it felt like I felt quite young myself. So I was like, what, what do I do now? So yeah, I reached out to search metrics. I presented the study um, and they loved it. And even though they had never worked with SMEs before, they were like, look, if you, you've identified something, we're more than happy to, to provide you access to, to our platform. So you can then go ahead and, and showcase all these data through a reliable source and that perhaps through the help of the platform, you can then help those communities. So yeah, they, they offered me access at an incredible rate. We're talking about a platform that normally goes for six figures and above yearly. And I, man I managed to get it for barely four figures a year, you know, and that allowed us to really kickstart and, and, you know, like start, start the journey of that. Yeah. I mean, that, that in itself goes to show how important data is in terms of that decision making and that kind of persuading and pushing the conversation into a certain direction because then yeah. we're not talking about opinions and feelings we're talking about hard facts facts exactly exactly so it's so easy for people to sort of discredit you when as you're saying you may be talking about anecdotal points or, or, or opinionated uh facts right but then all of a sudden if you have data in front of you and you have numbers and you are talking to data-driven individuals it's very hard for them to to look the other way right like um yeah as you're, as you're saying it's true right like the moment you present the facts for most people at least uh, or most people in power um or some people in power better said they will look at it and, and you know try try and support yeah and it also i think also speaks to this idea of how important it is to have diverse teams like kind of looking in into this data and compiling this data because this was obviously a gap right uh, yeah. that when you did look at it and when you know there was research and time put into it yeah. we were able to to paint a picture with it that was really full yeah. but maybe mm -hmm. previous teams just hadn't thought about it because it didn't directly impact them in any way it's it, it's funny that you're saying that, right? Because obviously I've, I've been in the industry for a very long time. I know a lot of people in the industry, you know, those that have been in the industry for a very long time. I, I know them really well, you know, and um, it's funny that when I did the study, everyone was shocked. And I was and it's, it's so much like you've been some of these people have been in the industry for 20 plus years, you know, so it just shows the position of, of privilege that most of them have to not even worry or, or think about the fact that wow everyone i'm sort of servicing and everyone i'm i'm making rank high on on google they all sort of look the same like the people behind these websites look the same you know and um i mean at the time let, to an extent i was kind of the same you know like yes of course like me being me as who i am personally i i was always like yeah like i've, I've never actually had to service or, or answer to a, a a black a black ceo which which was crazy but you know you just get on with your job because you need money to survive and you just crack on right it, it always plays out in your mind which is why i think at the time when when the whole thing with george floyd happened it was the very first thing that came to mind to sort of try and do you know for sure for sure let's let's talk a little bit more about that wider industry because i do think 
it was quite an interesting thing to witness in terms of when data was presented, kind of what's been the ripple effect. Can you talk a little bit more on that? Yeah, I mean, um, it, you know, I've, I've had a lot of people reach out, you know, like I've had I've had people reach out asking what is it that they can possibly do to help. I mean, um, I, I spoke about, about it, a Brighton SEO um, for the for the very first time. What is it? Two years ago now, or a year ago, perhaps I, I spoke about it, and um, and the room was full. I mean, like the organization themselves, no, no, no shade towards Brighton because they, they do an amazing job at trying to to be as inclusive as possible with from from uh, female funded businesses and and professionals to to those in the in the LGBTQ community as well as the uh, as well as ethnic minorities. Brighton SEO really do try to. To, to create a safe space for everyone, but they did give me the smallest possible room to speak about this topic. Um, and, but the one thing I will say, and, and I will sort of commend everyone on everyone that was there, the room was packed. I mean, we had people sitting down, we had people standing up, people sitting on the floors right at the back. It was full of people and a lot of very powerful people were in that room. You know, we're talking about people that, owners uh, of some of the biggest agencies in the UK, um, people that that literally run uh, uh, the Google, the search Google department. You know, um, we had yeah a lot a lot of powerful individuals in that in that room, and that goes to show that you know even though in the past they hadn't thought about the topic, they were still interested to find out more about it and, and really try and see in what ways they can possibly help. And um, the one thing about the SEO industry that perhaps has over other industries or some of the other industries is that um, we share a lot of resources amongst each other, you know. So one of the things I've always tried to tell them is that, like, if, you, if you're sharing resources amongst each other, like, why not just try and share resources amongst, amongst a certain community, as, like, you know, for them to then be the ones to carry it inwards towards their communities, you know. And luckily we have, um, uh, like, people within the SEO industry that also belong to the black community in this example, who are trying to do a lot of things too, you know? So it's, it's very positive to see. I think the study, again, just, just added that element of credibility to everything we're trying to do so that you don't have the, the annoying um, sort of close-minded individuals that come in with their silly points. As a matter of fact, I, we still have an article on the Oxford Mail, I believe it is, where we have over 80 comments um, on the article where you have a bunch of people saying, oh, but what about my people and all of that? And it's like, unfortunately, the data doesn't really back your point. So, you know, having the data there, just it does, it does help. A hundred percent. And I think you made an interesting point there in the, in, in the fact that you were speaking out to like a packed room that, again, I think goes to show sometimes people, you know, will argue, well, there's no data or there hasn't been research done here because there's not even enough interest in the topic or anything like that. And I think it definitely takes individuals to kind of question the data. Where is it coming from? Who is sourcing it? And like, yeah, that kind of source of data as well. It, 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 it's not lacking because there is that lack of interest, essentially. That is that is a fantastic point. And to be honest, one I had, I've never thought about before, right? Like, there's a lot of times where data is presented from, um, you know, for example, there's a lot of data about the LGBTQ community presented from individuals that don't belong to that community, right? And then, yeah. and then there's a lot of question marks around it, you know? Um, and the same thing happens with this, this research that, that I produced. When I produced the research, I had so much passion behind it that the level of attention to detail was second to none, you know, because it's, I guess you know, in, in, in a way, it's within my interest to ensure that whatever I put out to the world is 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 facts and is it, it's one hundred percent accurate, right? Um, and and yeah, you're right. Like there's there's even if this sort of research had been done by by someone else, um, I do I do believe that the smart thing to do would have been for me to to double check those those figures too, just in case, you know. Okay. Nice. As we kind of come to to the to the end of this, let's talk about some of those facts that and figures that you did come across from your research report. So, from the first year, which was in twenty twenty, that July twenty twenty report, what did you find in terms of like black owners and founders, um, or even CEOs, like black leaders, 
um, that were leading companies in in the SERPs. Why don't you talk a bit through kind of the methodology of the report and the findings? So look, we looked at 10 different industries and I can tell you all 10 industries. We looked at the automobile industry. We looked at uh, the electronics industry, the retail industry, the beauty industry, um, the baby care industry, the health and fitness, events, home. Um, so we like in total 10 different industries that, that we analyze across like the UK, right? Like some of the most successful businesses in, in the UK all belong to those industries, right? Um, I analyze the top 100 ranking businesses in every single one of those industries. So 10 industries, 100 different websites that the total of that is a thousand websites analyzed by the end of it right the very first time i did it um there was two businesses ranking two black owned businesses ranking or competing for rankings one of them being the the now non-existent oprah magazine so you know like we we can expect a, a business like that or a website like that to compete for rankings thankfully um then we did the same study in 2022, I want to say, because uh, 2021, is we were still running with the 2020 study. So in 2022, we did the same study and there were six black-owned businesses ranking at the top. So, you know, like, yeah, there's, there's progress, some sort of progress happening. Um, yeah, we actually found, sorry, just to add to that. So we, there were actually seven black owned businesses, but two of them were owned by the same person. So essentially it was six people, <laughs> but seven businesses. Yeah. It's, um, look, you know what, like, right. Like it's like, so, so that was the methodology, you know, we, we really, we tried to, to look for industries that, you know, like where we know we have businesses that belong to those industries, you know, um, and it's so, the number is so low that, of course, you laugh as almost as if, like, you know, you know yeah, what, what else can we expect? But it's a serious problem, you know, like we think about it and it's, the internet is a new phenomenon. If we think about it, like, what is it, 25 years old, like 30, absolute max. Um, so it's so easy to, to almost still take it as a little bit as a joke, but the internet is huge, it's incredibly powerful. Like so many people nowadays have like their livelihood, they make their livelihood out of the internet, right? Like for so many of us, like we, we wouldn't have a job if it wasn't for the internet, you know? So it just goes to show that there's a new world being created and and once again, our, our community is being left behind, you know? So it's it's something that we really need to to be aware of, you know, and, and work hard to ensure that it doesn't happen again. I mean, now we start, what is it, 25 years behind, you know, at least it's not 500. So so we have a lot more of a chance to, to, to try and, and revert the situation, you know, like it, the same thing that's happening to the offline world is happening to the online world and, and we shouldn't allow that to happen. A hundred percent. So just to, I guess, to summarize and some, some key takeaways from this, what would, what would be almost like, I guess your advice when it comes to maybe people that are trying to establish an idea or a concept, like what would be your recommendations in terms of how they go about this? Um, look, if, if your whole idea is to have like a, an online shop, you should like my number one advice always is, Treat it as if it was an offline shop. You know, what happens very often is that uh, a lot of people decide to create a website to just have a business and create and start their business. And they want to make that be their, their, like their breadwinner, you know. However, they decide to, to invest little to nothing on the website, right? Like in, in terms of building, I'm not even talking about advertising it, right? Like that very first step of building your website is hugely key. You know, sometimes you can build your website so good and so well done that you don't even need a CEO for a very long time, you know, because the, fa the, the foundation is already there. What happens very often is that a lot of people just, just don't do that. And what, what, I will, what I'll try to say with do it as if it was an offline shop, so a real life shop is that you know that if you're going to go away and, and purchase uh, 
like a, a shop, an establishment in real life, it's going to cost you a significant amount, right? Um, because you also want to make it look nice inside, right? So people, so you attract people to come into your shop. So you should look at your website the same way. Like, you know, like if, if your whole intention is to ensure that your website is what provides uh, that revenue for, for yourself, make sure you invest properly. Um, because I promise you, like the more you invest at the start, the less you then have to invest going forwards, you know? Um, and although the data does show that it's very hard for us to, to have those funds available, um, sometimes being patient and like being able to almost try and um, save up save up your funds to then be able to, to launch the website is a lot better than just launching the website and then having little to no traffic for a very long time and then you still have that stock sitting in, in your home, you know? So my number one tip, and if you have to take anything away from this from this uh, recording, it'd be that is if, if you want your website to, to be successful and to be a breadwinner for, for your business, um, make sure you invest properly at the start when building it. Perfect. Thank you so much, Fabio. Um, I think also probably another takeaway in terms of, I guess from the data side of things, if the data isn't there, go and find it because yep. it, it is it's sitting there waiting to be discovered. But you know, just someone hasn't gone and made the effort of compiling it, either because it means it's not a priority in their eyes or anything like that. But actually having that data will be able to fuel anything that you do in the future and will be able to justify a lot of the decisions that you make along the way too. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. Great. Well, thank you so much, Fabio. It's been a really insightful session. Um, and hopefully people that have viewed this have understood the importance of data and what it can do in terms of once you do have it. Thank you so much, Soemi. You are amazing. Thank you.